Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look into a simple CRUD application in Angular. So there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. We're going to use the HTTP client from Angular Core Common HTTP and we're also going to use reactive forms for the form fields that we have. So starting, what we all we need is essentially a service and the service we are going to add some CRUD logic. So for the CRUD logic, let's go ahead and, and say first and foremost, we want to have a type. So in this case, we'll have an interface called user. We also want to create a base href, which essentially should come from the environment file. But for this case, we're going to place it here. In the constructor, we also want to inject the HTTP client from HTTP common module. And we also want a, want a get all function, which essentially will fetch all of the users that we're going to have. We want to have a create function. In this case, we need to delete the ID because we're using JSON mock server and it requires us to delete the ID. Uh, we have an update, which is essentially going to update the user and then we have a delete function. So if you haven't worked with HTTP client module before, what you need to do in order to use it is you need to navigate to the app module that we have and you, you need to import the HTTP client module within the imports field and it also needs to come from an Angular H common HTTP. So if you are here already, let's go ahead and also add reactive forms module so that we can utilize the form fields that we want to do. Once this is done, we can navigate back to our service we created and I will go more in detail to explain a bit how it works. We're using the HTTP client uh, and the way it works in Angular is that you can say this.http.get and here's the actual type of the return value that we have. And this is the route to the API that you have. So for, for get all, you'll just send in this for create or update. You want to pass in the user that you want to create or update as well. And for delete, you just want to send in the user in this way. And also when we delete the user, we will not return the user. We will just return a void in this case. So once this is done, we have a service which essentially communicate with our APIs or our backend that we have. We can go back to the app component where we will consume it. So the first thing is that we need to inject the service that we just created. It can be done by injecting it in the constructor like this. We're also going to use a a form group which comes from reactive forms. So the way you can create a form in this case, we're creating a form named user group and the form that we have, it will utilize an ID. It will essentially have a couple of controls, which will be the ID, email and name. And in the first improp here, it will be the default value of the form control. And then we have some, um, some Ob options that we can pass in here. So we're using non nullable true because we do not want the fields to be null. And just to keep in mind here, we're using reactive forms. There's a lot of things you can do with it. In this case, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. I have different videos on how to standardize input fields. I will put a link to that. If you're interested, please have a look. So another thing we want to do is essentially we want to have receive a list of the users which we want to loop through in the HTML later. Also, whenever the component is, is initialized, we want to call backend and we also want to set the users here so that we can access it from the HTML. Also, please use pay, pipe take one. This is done so you don't have to set up a subscription and then unsubscribe to it later. This will automatically comp complete it once it has been called. So the next thing we want to do is essentially we want to have function called create or update user. So here we're checking if the ID is equal to minus one, which essentially means it goes on the default value, which means it is a new user we're adding. Then we want to call a function called create user. If not, we want to update the user because we have a defined ID, which is greater than minus one. So starting from zero up to infinite. So in for the create user, what we want to do essentially is that we want to call the create function that we have in our service and we want to pass in the form. In this case, the form is going to reflect the user interface. We're also going to use the pipe take one here because we want it to complete after it has been called once. The API that we have is going to respond with a created user. So what we want to do in this case is we want to push the user into the array of users that we have so, so that we can list it in the HTML. 
Also keep in mind that we want to reset the form because we do not want uh, the form to still have the old credentials or user details we added into the form. So when we reset it, it will go and fall back to the initial values that we initially received from us. So for the update, it's quite identical. The difference is that we actually need to figure out which user was updated. We also want to manually update that so that we don't have to make another call to refetch all of the users. So this is a more performant pattern to, to go with. So also here we want to reset the form field because in the left side of the form, we essentially want to be able to edit. We essentially want to be able to, to create stuff um, and so on. All right. So once this, this is done, we'll jump back to the uh, here. We're going to have some reset functions that we have. Let's go ahead and add a trigger edit. This is going to be called from the HTML just to update the form that we have on the left side here. The reason to why we wanted to update is because we want to utilize the same form in this case for update and adding users. So we also want to have a delete function here. So deleting users is going to call our delete function in the service. It's also going to remove the user from our list or array of users. It's also going to call the reset function, which in this case does not make sense at all. So once this is done, we are good to go and try the logic out. So we can save the TS file. We can go to HTML. We want to add the boilerplate that you can see in the right screen. It's, it's pre-filled, so you would not see it. So we'll create a form and we'll also instance, instantiate our form group here. So the form group is the variable that we have and it essentially makes it easier for us to utilize the form within these fields. So we have the submit. So when we submit the form, it will create our create or update user. And depending on if the ID is minus one or not, it will create or update the user. So we'll create a label. We're also going to use a form control name. This can be utilized with the form control. So we're essentially binding the name form control from the group here shown here to this field that we're having here. And we can do the same thing for the email. So we can bind both of them, of course. And we're also going to have a button so that we can submit it. So, and what we also want to do is essentially we want to list through the users. So we want to have a list where we can list through the users. We're going to display the name and the email, but nonetheless, we want to be able to press edit or delete. So we want to add two buttons, one for delete and one for edit here. And when, once this is done, we can save it. And once this is done, you should be able to utilize the CRUD application as, as wanted. So you could go ahead and add a name. You could go ahead and add an email here. And when you press, once you press add email, it's going to add the email. It's going to call this function here. It will say, okay, the, the ID is minus one. So we need to create the user. If not, we need to update the user. So if I press, press update, Let's call Sebastian updated here. If I press edit, it should update the name here. Sebastian updated with, with the email that I had. And just to try it out, trying again, trying again like this, it should add another item to the list as we can see here. So in this case, we have visualized how it works to, to, to list items from the API. We have also shown how to edit and create items, but let's go ahead and do the final thing, which essentially is deleting the items. And as you can see here, it tries to delete the item. It does not really successfully do it because we are not removing it from here. So instead of doing that, we could instead do this. Instead of looking at the form field, we could just go ahead and look at the user's ID. So when I delete it, it is now working as expected. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This is a simple crowd application in Angular. If you have any comments, please leave it below. I will publish this code alongside with the JSON server that I have. There's a couple of ways to spin up the, the mock server, but the way we're going to do it now is just running npm run mock colon server it will spin up the server with the users they have and you will be able to try it yourself
Alright, thanks for watching. All the best. Take care.